everyone, it's Dawn. Welcome to today's pour. Today, I had the idea that I would do a triple bi-color tree ring pour on this 10 by 20 canvas. So I've got my recycled cups here. And I want to mix white and black for one pour, phthalo blue and black for the middle pour, and or maybe the third pour. And then this, ah, oh, I forget. I can't remember the name of this crimson. Alizarin Crimson Hue. And if I'm saying it wrong, somebody tell me in the comments. Because I pride myself on being an English expert. Anyway, so I was going to do three different dirty cups, just layering the paint in each. And then pouring out the three different ring pours. And then probably tilt them this way and that way. And... Hopefully end up with more lines than circles. That's the thought behind it today. So, without further ado, I'm going to have at it. Now, I didn't put any water in this. This is mixed. The black, it's flow acrylic, is mixed about 1.5 parts of flow gel to one part of paint. I want it thick so it doesn't mix so much so we don't get really muddy colors. So I'm going to pour some of this in each of the cups. I probably have more than enough paint, well, more than enough paint mixed for a canvas this size. Having run short a few times, I tend to err on the side of having too much than having too little. So anyways, this black is nice and nice and thick, so hopefully it won't get all friendly with the other colors and make muddy tones. At least not too much anyway. Alright. So now we'll carefully layer these other colors in these cups. I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. It's more or less staying on the top. This will be our white and black mix. And hopefully we won't get too, too much gray out of it. Set that aside. Do we want to do red or blue next? In my mind's eye, I see it as blue, so we'll we'll pour the blue next. If you pour down the side, the paint tends to layer more so than me. And these other colors, other than the black, I did mix just a, just a little tiny bit thicker than I normally do with hardly any water in the middle. I'll put my mix in the description below. Now, the question is, do we pour one, two, three, or do we do the middle one first and then the end ones? It's so hard to know when you haven't done it before. So, actually, I'm just, I'm going to work end to end. So, just got to turn it so, I don't know how the paint's going to come out, but I would like it to come out. Both colors together. Oh well, it'll be what it will. <laughs> now the white's sitting all on top. It will be what it will be. If it turns out really bad, I don't ever have to publish this video, right? <laughs> 
Oh, that's not so bad. We got some pretty grays and hopefully the black will make a better appearance here soon. There we go. I don't know why, but it reminds me of the intro from the Twilight Zone. If y'all are old enough to remember that. There we go. We'll set that aside. Yes, I know it's rolling over the side, but it's okay. Because we're going to move on to the blue now. What about right there? Oh, it's all blue. Where's the black? Oh, there we go. There's some black. There we go. Actually, I kind of like that the blue is concentrated to the outside, so we have more definition in the middle here. That's mostly black, but I'm just going to move that on out. So we've got two of three ring pours done. Oh. Now we'll do the red. Okay. I'm still undecided about whether I like this new crimson hue. I mean, it's it's a cool red, which is usually one of my favorite colors, but it's really got some pinky tones to it. So this is about the third painting I've done with it. I think I like it. I didn't have quite as much mixed up, so I'm going to try to get a little more out of this before I take the cup away. And there we go. There's no silicone in any of this. Oh, I think I just got paint on my face. Well, I did. <laughs> Good thing. I'm not showing you my face. Yeah, there's no silicone in this, so if there's any little bubbles or cells forming, it's strictly from the Floetrol. So I'm going to leave this for several minutes just to let gravity do its thing and the paint will flatten out and spread a little bit, and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll give it a tilt. Okay, we're back. I just ran a little bit of the extra paint out of these cups over here onto the canvas just to help the, the other paints flow. And now we're going to tilt. <laughs>
hand as a corner catcher to help it out that little bit. All right. Come on, Kate, you can do this. Can you tell I'm not a patient person? <laughs> oh, my glove is pretty. All right. We're going to come over here and we're going to stretch the black and the white a wee bit more. Get this side covered. And then we can play if we need to. Just a little bit. Okay. Ah. Side's good. I don't know if we can get that side to slide down just a little bit more. Even out our lines. Well, even if we can't. That is kind of a cool looking painting. Oh, just a little tiny bit. White showing there. Okay. That is kind of cool looking. I don't know that I want to stretch it anymore. I think I'm going to leave it just like that. And I'm going to come back and show you a close up in just a moment. And here is the finished painting. I do really like what the black and white did over here. Nice high contrast. There's a lot less contrast here in the blue and black, but there's still some cool gradations in there. And then I like the bright blue stripe next to the red stripe. And we've got a little more definition in the red and black. I did hit it with a torch just quickly to pop the bubbles. And I will show you a still so that you can see this without the glare. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I really appreciate that you spent some time with me and my art. Before you go, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and maybe check out some of my other videos. Thanks again for watching. You have a great day. See you next time. Bye for now.